<laughs> okay, so it's on. This is uh, I'm using the headset because of the uh, fan noise here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Yeah, I've had a lot of requests about uh, getting to do more language uh, videos and uh, those are on uh, several accounts. Uh, I had actually some people finally who are <laughs> have linguistics backgrounds who wanted me to talk about linguistics, actual linguistics. Then of course I got a whole lot of people who want to know about language learning which is uh, seems to be what most of the people on YouTube are talking about, clamoring about. There is a small academic, I mean real academic uh, small small group I wouldn't even say it's a group it's, it's a segment here and there that uh, know what they're talking about <coughs> and um, so what is this it's just a video to, to to acknowledge that I've gotten a lot of requests uh, for the language stuff I'm gonna tell you that uh, yeah I'm gonna talk about the language learning there's some things that I've uh, come across that other or come across that I know that other people uh, haven't been doing on YouTube and and uh, generally they are ignoring some really good resources and a couple of those resources people know of them but they're not using them correctly and it's all in the implementation of them it's just like a cooking recipe you can have the ingredients but if you don't put them in the right order at the right time it's not going to work and those two sources that I'm really big uh, in favor of using, I don't like using that sort of idiom big, <laughs> I'm a huge fan, meaning you're fat. <laughs> anyway, so those two aspects of language learning are the FSI material because it's available, it's out there, it's been out there and there's a lot of work was put into that stuff. Uh, most people don't have a clue about what they're looking at or what they're doing. They read it, which I'll give you that hand right now, they're reading it, they're, that's not what it was meant for. Um, and then they're not using Pimsleur. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why they're not using Pimsleur th the way that will really work. And um, well, I'm not going to go into those right now because that's something I'm going to uh, hold back. I, a lot of people don't seem to be, they just seem to be freebie hunters. They're coming on here just, you know, trying to get as much information from as they can. They're going to a lot of pseudo sources. That's that's why I'm, I'm giving this, uh, letting some information out is because they do a lot of pseudo sources of what to do. And they don't listen to the few people that are on here who actually do know what they're doing. And those are not the ones that uh, that are the, the most popular. The most popular ones are the people who are using a left brain text, uh, using a uh, text book sort of <laughs> you know and, and and really bad textbooks in a lot of cases teach uh, learning from a textbook which is a really faulty teaching or learning technique and they can only handle those languages that are documented meaning they don't have the, the skills of a linguist of a true field linguist be able to to figure out decipher analyze uh, what a language is and then how to go about learning it so they're very limited uh, anyway, so this I'm trying to cover a lot of bases here. This is sort of it answers to the, an the questions I've been getting. And um, what's one of the good things about being in, in Phnom Penh these days? I was here, I lived here earlier when it was far wilder. Now it's not. People still think it's a, they think they're coming here so they can give a people there. It's like the 1990s, but it's not. Uh, and the fact is that there's the bookstore, used bookstores. You could just get so many different languages. This is the biggest group of. German uh, books I found <laughs> throughout Southeast Asia so that's good and actual real not just translated from uh, this one I think is however translated from English originally was English I think uh, this one it, it, the problem is I ended up taking something you know, I'm not getting finding really interesting so this is obviously French and th I did see some Spanish stuff that I wanted but it's boring that subjects are kind of boring so that's what's good here that there's so many travelers that go through that are <laughs> dumping off their books from their countries that you can find that things that you can't find in certain places uh, you can't find it in the, in the USA or Canada very easily uh, anyway so that's one good resource for those people who are at that level can understand from their intermediate level at least of reading 
comprehension, and that is not the only skill that's necessary, and that, of course, is for documented world languages. Um, now, on to the actual linguistic stuff. Uh, because I've been getting um, requests from people who actually know a little something, and there's a few people that have uh, academic backgrounds and, and a few people who are just really strong enthusiasts and they've read a lot. They haven't really got it, what we would call academic background, but they've, they're they really good at the things that they do. Um, they've asked me on a, a myriad of subjects. <laughs> Since I'm here in uh, ma mainland Southeast Asia, it's called, um, that's not the only language. I mean, th this this area of the world uses a lot of things like particles. So I have a guy who wants me to talk about particles. And he himself has got a good, he's a strong background in linguistics and he's also now pursuing a master's in translation so very good <laughs> in fact I think he had was a German he is a German uh, language translator is what he's going to be is or what he's trying to get accredited as also the um, things about particles here uh, because these are synthetic languages they use there's not morphology. There's not, there's not there's not morphology. So how you're going to accomplish certain things like uh, showing aspect tense evidentiality, which is doesn't really exist in English. It's evidentials or something that uh, which means how do you know something? Did you did someone hear it directly from? Did they witness it? Were they there when it happened? Did they talk to the person who did it or? was it from someone else and some languages have actual particles that tell when you're speaking if those that what the evidential <laughs> background of the information is if it was first hand if it was second hand or if it was just something you heard from other people this is something in English that's caught and especially in court of law they want to know how you know this but in other languages it's stated through, through this, uh, a lot of times from particles it's one of the big things that uh, synthetic languages use um, also um, uh, particles are used for a lot of things like uh, aspect and uh, time of course because uh, there's no morphology so there's no there's no actual tense tense is only morphological so when people speak of English and they say there's these tenses but there's not there's only two because morphologically it's either past or non past that's it uh, the things that that people who are actually English teachers are miss <laughs> once again don't know what they're talking about because they don't know linguistics they talk about oh yeah, he will do this uh, do is very unique by the way in English because the other languages don't have that and it came into English um, around right after the Shakespeare's time basically around that area era anyway so will is a is a is a modal is what we really in English and it's not morphological it's not a tense and uh, will is not a clitic at this point in time because it it's still it, it has its meaning on its own uh, it's so it's not uh, grammaticalized completely uh, that's not the only thing so the future tense is, is not a tense directly but that's how uh, English teachers and a lot of people who've taken TESOL courses and things like that want to talk about but that's not true. Um, anyway, so the uh, that that's an uh, that's something that, that the particles are used for. Particles are also used for politeness. That's really big. Um, ka, ka, uh, those sorts of and that's a tie. For example, those things are uh, honorifics. It can be another word for them. Uh, they're used for politeness, and they don't have any real meaning other than to denote politeness. Uh, other, there's a lot in a lot of languages, so th that's one way. That's um, of course, uh, uh, one part of of particles. Particles are also used sometimes to just be uh, softeners. Na in um, Thai is used as a softener, much like people in English who constantly say, "Well, it was like." Like is really sort of this softener so it's not as, as abrupt as just going into it although it really has no meaning if you listen to US speakers they use this quite a bit it's rather annoying especially if you do conversational analysis of what they're what they're talking about anyway um, so that's a little bit on particles there's a lot more I didn't go in depth because uh, a lot of people couldn't follow it but that's just a little bit um, I've been getting a lot of feedback again too on um, 
my comments about other would-be YT authorities. Since they're not, they don't have the academic credentials, they don't have the background, they can't handle certain things, they can't handle certain debates. And uh, I will be talking about Kaufman's misunderstanding of Asher and Terrell. He, I, I don't know, this guy, you, he's trying to sell a product and his product is based on him constantly babbling about it and then saying that yes but we're using comprehensible input and he doesn't even understand what it is and his whole approach is anti what Crash and Torello were talking about but you know let the deluded guy talk some more because he doesn't know what he's doing other than trying to sell his product over Benny's product <laughs> you know uh, so that's just a little bit so this is a this was a little bit of answering your recent questions and then you know that uh, when I have time because I'm busy and this is one of, one of my <laughs> fellow academics think it's I'm really wasting my time by talking to people who can't handle because you can't understand linguistics without work just like a surgeon got on here and started talking to you about surgery you're not going to understand either but there are a few people of course that will but very few and um, so I just want to denounce the just the self-appointed expert status of uh, a lot of these people in YT who don't know a whole lot actually and are trying to sell you something a service and nothing else you know that doesn't make them an expert on anything any more than uh, jumping up and down which doctor is a neuroscientist you know <laughs> and you can take that analogy to them if you like anyway I will talk to you again and we will pursue this huge endeavor called Languages and Linguistics.